Hello, I'm Serena and welcome to this series, Introduction to Python. To make the content in this video more accessible, click the closed caption button or adjust the playback speed. In this video, we will learn about the different data types in Python, how to work with variables, what is hard coding versus dynamic coding, and a brief introduction to strings. So let's get started. So the first thing that I do want to go through are the data types that's inside of Python. So um, you may see me put pound signs here. That's so this will not be executable while we are working together, okay? So a string is anything with double quotations or single quotations around it. I'm sorry. All right. And then we have integers, which are just basic numbers. So you may see something like num equals seven. Then we also have floats, which I'm going to call this num1, and it's going to be equal to 3.0. Um, and doubles look very much the same. Um, the only difference is, is the amount of spaces that it allows for you to put there. So I'm just going to put 10.0. Now, those are some of the basic data types that we will be using throughout our series. And um, let me explain this in a way that is probably more familiar with you. So I want you to think as A equal Apple concept. What do I mean by that? When they were teaching you A equal Apple, B equals boy, basically they weren't telling you that A is Apple. They were trying to give you an association. So I want you to think of whatever the variable name is, it is associated with the value that is on the right. So if we decided to print name here, what do you think we would get? So let's click play and, play and find out. It's going to print out Serena. So that means anywhere you use this variable in your code, what it actually stands for is Serena. So variables are, I guess you can say, defined as something that holds values, okay? Now, it's an interesting to note that let's say that we have um, num1 and num underscore one, okay? And we're going to make that equal three. So, as you see, I am separating this variable from num1 plus num underscore one. You can also perform math inside of these print statements. These print statements is basically um, defined as your output. So if you ever run into something where you're trying to output something or get something to print to a screen, that is basically what you want to do. So what is the basic print statement? It's just print, open, and close parentheses, and anything that you want to print to the screen, anything that you want your user to see is going to be coupled inside of this print statement. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So this value, num, or I mean, this variable num actually is holding the value seven. This variable is actually holding the value three. So when I perform this math inside of this print statement, it actually produced the number 10. All right, so variables are only, I guess you could say placeholders, or a set of characters um, holding a value or they are associated with the value that is on the right-hand side. So here we went through some data types and hopefully that helped with that concept. So I'm just going to erase that 
and we're going to discuss how do we hard code variables. Well, you've seen a, an example when I did this. When I added my name to the variable, okay? Now, if I wanted to print this out, it's going to always say my name. But this may not be best practice if you want thousands or even millions of people to use your program. So how would we do that? All right, so we're gonna take, this is hard coding, but we're gonna take this off and we're just going to add an input statement. So what is an input statement? This open and close parentheses, it comes out to look like a function to become an object inside of Python. Basically, this variable now can become anything that comes in through input. The input statement is going, Python is going to wait. It's going to make the Python um, output here, the co output console, it's going to make it pause. And once it pauses, it's going to be looking for input via the keyboard, via, you know, via the mouse, however you input your information. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we're going to run this. And as you see, we don't see anything here. But if we were to click here, it's paused. So let's go ahead and we're going to do Amy. Oops, take the space out and hit enter. So this is actually what we input. And this is just printing output. So let's make this a little bit more interesting. So when we have the concepts of outputting something and we want to make it look useful, right? We want our program to be useful. So the first thing that most programmers experience is this hello world, right? If you've ever looked at another video um, learning Python, you may have seen this hello world. But what we're going to do is we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to put a comma here. And then we're going to, and the reason why we want to do this is because we want hello, then the person's name, and then this exclamation point to print out. All right, great. So it's waiting on me. All right. So we're just going to use Amy again. Oop. Sorry. Hello, Amy. So you may be wondering why this space is here. That's because commas, when they're inside of your print statement, they automatically add a space. But there's a workaround, and it's called concatenation. Cat concatenation makes two things um, when we're dealing with strings. And how do you know that it's a string? Because of the double quotations, OK? Yes, I use double quotations and you also can use single quotations. They are um, basically going to give you the same function, except for when you start using maybe an apostrophe inside of a name. But let's stay focused on this for now. How do we get rid of that space between our variable and our exclamation point? So we're gonna put a plus sign here and this is called concatenating because we want name plus the exclamation point to print out at the end of our sentence. So let's throw that away and we're going to run this again. We're gonna go back to Amy. This comma literally printed out because we had it between the quotation marks. So anything that is not stored in your variable, but you want it to show up inside of your sentence, you will need to add that inside of a string or some type of way for that to print out. All right, now this is just the basics of output. So I'm kind of mixing some of the things that we were gonna talk about. So, so far we have went over an input statement, the data types and how to start printing out to the screen. You also seen some um, different how to assign variables. When we're assigning variables, basically we can assign variables through input or we can assign variables by simply using 
double quotation marks and putting a enforcing a value to mean something. The only time that I would say that this would be useful is that you purposely do not want that particular value to change. However, nothing stops me from putting this here. If I were to cut that and put that down here, and let's do a print statement. We're gonna do a print statement that says, um, Right now, my name is, and then I'm going to get rid of that um, space there because our comma actually adds our space. And then you can always redefine variables in your code. Right. So let's go ahead and throw this away, and we're going to play that again. So, being that we hard coded this name, um, this name inside of our variable, it automatically edited here and printed out our statement. But now, because we have this input statement, we're going to change that value to now my name is Sarah. So yes, you can redefine these variables as you go throughout your code if you have hard coded it. However, in the academic space, you may run into, you know, something that's only looking for you to use the input statement. Now, this is called an input statement alone. But what if we run into something where we want to prompt our users and show them how to use our program? Have you ever been somewhere on the net and it asks for you to um, enter your username? Right. So that's what we're going to provide. So we're going to say, what is your name? Right. So what is your name? Now we're going to do a slash in on this. What that slash in does, just in case if you were taking a look at this and wondering what it was, this takes the input on the next line. So let's run through this so we can see how all of this is put together. Oh. I need to make a print statement so we can see it. <laughs> All right. And we're going to say, oop. All right. So now this particular pause is working with this number seven line here. That is this line, it's waiting. It doesn't have anything, it's not showing us anything, right? That's because this has no prompt. It's what it's called, all right? So let's go ahead and we're gonna do Sarah again. I know all of the Sarahs. All right, so Sarah, and what is your name? So now we have this, and as you see, Python automatically put that input down here. It's ready for input underneath our prompt. That is the purpose of this slash in being inside of this, all right? So let's go ahead and we're just gonna say lead to make this simple. So we went over some print statement, how to hard code variables, how to accept input and how to use a prompt. And we added how to have that input, go to the next line. Thank you for watching and we hope to work with you soon. For more academic support resources, please read the video's description. Thank you for watching and we hope to work with you soon.